What is an electrocardiogram known in short as ECG? ECG is the recording of the electrical activity of the heart. The electrical system of the heart produces regular tiny electrical currents which travel throughout the heart in a systematic manner. When these currents are recorded from the surface of the body, it is called an ECG. The electrical currents synchronize the contractions of the various regions of the heart. First, the upper chambers contract and after a delay, the lower chambers contract. This delay is needed for the proper filling of the lower chambers when the upper chambers contract. Contraction of the lower chambers pump blood to various parts of the body. ECG is recorded by placing multiple electrodes on designated parts of the body and connecting them to the ECG machine. Typically, four electrodes are connected to all four limbs and six electrodes are placed on the chest. The important waves seen in ECG are P, QRS complex and T wave. Pattern of the waves changes between the ECG leads. Coming back to the 12 lead ECG shown initially, the different leads are obtained by various combinations of the surface electrodes. The connections can be switched inside the ECG machine. Leads called V1 to V6 are the recordings from the electrodes placed over the chest. They are recorded from specified regions of the chest. The other leads are known as limb leads. Limb leads are produced by combining electrical signals from the limbs, arms and legs in various specified combinations within the machine. The lower part of the image shows continuous recording from one lead. This is called a rhythm strip meant for checking abnormalities in heart rhythm. The contraction of the upper chambers of the heart start soon after the beginning of the P wave which represents the electrical activity of the upper chambers. QRS complex and T wave are the electrical signals from the lower muscular chambers of the heart. ECG changes in a heart attack are usually manifest in these waves. ECG is short for electrocardiogram, the recording of the electrical activity of the heart. It is recorded by placing metallic contacts known as electrodes in specified parts of the limbs and chest and connecting them to the ECG machine known as an electrocardiograph. The electrical signals from the heart detected on the surface of the body are tiny in the range of millivolts. The ECG machine amplifies these tiny signals and records the variations in the signals with time on a moving graph paper. This record of the electrical activity of the heart recorded from the body surface is the ECG. As these signals are tiny, it is essential to avoid interferences from other electrical signals in the vicinity and from the body itself. An electrical interference which can arise from within the body is the electrical activity of contracting muscles. So it is essential for the person to stay relaxed during ECG recording. Movements of limbs or even tremor due to undue anxiety can produce a lot of unwanted electrical signals on the ECG, sometimes making interpretation difficult. This is quite common in the case of small children who are often upset by the multiple wires being fixed on the body. Hence, recording ECG in children is done either during natural sleep or after sedation with suitable medication. Electrical equipment in the vicinity which can generate electrical interference may have to be switched off during the recording, especially in places like the hospital intensive care unit. To ensure good electrical contact between the recording electrode and the skin, an electrode gel, which is a good conductor of electricity, will be applied at locations of skin contact. If the designated region is too hairy, 
it may be necessary to shave the region to get a good electrical contact. In young children, small sticky electrodes may be used instead of the electrode clips and suction electrodes for the chest. Applying a suction electrode on the chest of a small infant can produce mild bruising of skin. Moreover, there will not be enough space on the chest for applying multiple adult sized suction electrodes. Usually, four electrode clips are placed on the four extremities at the wrists and angles. Suction cup electrodes are placed over specified locations of the chest. These electrodes are connected to the machine through an ECG cable. Within the machine, different combinations of electrodes can be chosen to record different ECG leads. In standard 12 lead ECG, 6 limb leads and 6 chest leads are recorded. Sometimes additional electrodes may be placed on the chest known as right chest leads when specific abnormalities are suspected or in the rare situation of the heart being on the right side. ECG is recorded on a heat sensitive thermal coated paper. The tracings tend to fade as time passes. So it is advisable to have a photocopy of the tracing for long term record. Many take snapshots on their mobile phones these days to have a virtual copy. Some types of ECG equipment like certain treadmill exercise ECG recorders can print on usual type of paper which does not fade with time. But most other treadmill ECG recordings also fade with time and needs photocopy for long term storage. Though the heart rate can be easily checked using the stethoscope or by checking the pulse rate most of the times, in some situations you may need the help of an ECG strip. Pulse rate may be lower than the heart rate when the rhythm is irregular and fast as in an abnormal rhythm originating from the upper chambers of the heart known as atrial fibrillation. When there is a fast heart rhythm, especially in small babies, it may be too fast to count it from the pulse or using the stethoscope. Normal heartbeat itself is 140 per minute in newborn babies. An abnormal heart rate may be much higher than 200 per minute which is difficult to check manually. In an intensive care setting when the cardiac monitor has been connected, it will automatically display the heart rate from the ECG. Most modern computerized ECG machines will also print the heart rate along with the ECG tracing. But it will be nice to know how to calculate heart rate from the ECG as errors can occur in machine calculation. This occurs when some waves are too tall that it may be counted as an additional heartbeat by the machine. Sometimes when the waves are too small, some may not be counted by the machine and it will display a low heart rate. Similarly, while counting the pulse manually, some pulses may be weak in an irregular rhythm and not felt. This will lead to a falsely low heart rate being recorded. Usual ECG recording is done at a paper speed of 25 mm per second. The speed will be printed at the bottom of the tracing in most cases. If it has been recorded at 50 mm per second or more, the calculation will have to be modified accordingly. When the paper speed is 25 mm per second, it would cover 1500 mm in a minute. The interval between two beads is measured by looking at the number of millimeters in the graph paper between two beads. If the interval is 10 mm, the heart rate will be 150 per minute. 1500 divided by 10 is equal to 150. While checking the rate from the ECG, we can also find out the rate at which the upper chambers or the atria are beating and the rate at which the lower chambers or ventricles are beating. Normally, both chambers contract at the same rate in a sequential manner 
with upper chambers followed by lower chambers after a short delay. But in some conditions like complete heart block, electrical block, when the electrical signals from the upper chambers are not conducted to the lower chambers, upper chambers work at a speed higher than that of the lower chambers. This can be seen in the ECG as a greater number of P waves representing the upper chambers than the number of QRS complexes representing the lower chambers. If the interval between two consecutive P waves is measured, we can calculate the rate of the upper chambers. The rate of the lower chambers can be measured by checking the interval between the QRS complexes. Usually, the interval between the R waves is taken for this and is called the RR interval. Here, while the upper chambers are beating at 83 per minute, lower chambers are beating only at 48 per minute, which is the rate at which heart pumps out blood. The pulse rate will be only 48 per minute, which is low. Normal range of pulse rate is 60 to 100 per minute. Some of you asked how ECG becomes abnormal in a heart attack. Here is a very simplified explanation. As mentioned in my previous video, ECG has mainly a P wave representing activity of the upper chambers and a QRS complex and T wave representing the activity of the lower chambers. In a major heart attack, the electrical activity of the heart muscle immediately below the recording electrode disappears. So the positive part of the QRS complex disappears and a negative wave appears. The T wave also gets inverted usually though the P wave generated from the upper chambers is usually spared. Of course this is a highly simplified explanation of what is seen in an ECG after the heart attack is fully established. Picking up a heart attack earlier requires more expertise. Expertise is also needed to rule out causes other than heart attack which can sometimes cause ECG abnormalities and normal variations. Many of the modern computerized ECG machines have built-in software which can detect a heart attack in its early stage and display the interpretation in the ECG printout. But errors can occur and always needs a careful interpretation by the medical personnel correlating with symptoms and signs in the person. ECG is a widely available simple test to detect heart attack and gives important information in many other heart diseases. Still, human error during recording can cause difficulty and errors in interpretation sometimes. The commonest error is misplacement of ECG electrodes used for recording. Of these, the most common one is placing the electrode meant for right arm in the left arm and vice versa. This will cause the waves which are expected to be upright to be inverted. This same pattern can occur in birth defects in which the heart is on the right side than on the left side of the chest. It can be easily identified by checking the recordings from the chest leads which will show normal pattern if only limb leads have been reversed. Errors during recording can be easily identified by getting the ECG recorded under direct observation of the medical personnel when there is a doubt. If there is a source of strong electrical interference in the vicinity, it will show up in the ECG as a 50 Hz alternating current tracing in the baseline. This usually occurs in the intensive care units where several electrically operated devices are connected to the individual. Simple method to avoid this is to switch off all other electrical equipment in the vicinity temporarily and operate the ECG machine on battery. Errors due to picking up of electrical activity from the muscles can occur in those who are restless or quite anxious and having tremors. 
This can be taken care of by pacifying and occasionally by using sedation if unavoidable, especially in case of children. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.